what a lovely day to walk through the garden. Looks like I actually spent a little too much time walking in the garden. Oh, hello! Welcome once again to Cytanium Mine. Uh, I apparently left the cave for a little bit because I have some kind of a sunburn on me. Uh, this is why I should never, ever leave this spot. But it did get me to thinking about a game that I played recently called Botany Manor. I don't know if you've ever heard of the idea of an old English manor that has really elaborate gardens, but this game lets you live out your Downton Abbey-inspired gardening game. Uh, it really is more of a cozy game, but with puzzle elements, there is no way for you to, like, die or, or anything. There's no meters to follow. It's really just about trying to figure out the puzzle of these plants that you are being given. I should probably start with the basic structure of the story, though. You are playing Lady Arabella Green. Lady Arabella is coming back to Botany Manor. And she has had a long history of being fascinated with plants and trying to figure out what makes them bloom. There is, of course, one big problem. This takes place in the 1800s and in an English manor-born society. And for the most part, people are not too fond of the idea of her, as a woman, trying to go into botany which is considered a very, very important and serious field. You also find a lot of letters throughout the house from her relatives who are very concerned that she has not married yet. Uh, this is sort of the society that they set up her being in and her trying to navigate. But that's not really the big important part here. The important part is that Lady Arabella needs to get these plants to bloom. And they're very unusual plants that have very specific circumstances by which they will be able to bloom. And the idea is that if she can get them all to work and put down her findings, the very elaborate ones that she has, she'll finally be able to finish her botany book and send it off to publishers who will totally publish it. We think. The game starts you out with something fairly straightforward in a wind flower, where you are in the greenhouse. But way before you get into the gardens or the manor itself, you really start here. And there's this smog that is outside that you need to find a way to clear. And so you have to deal with getting this wind flower, which can actually move the smog away, to bloom. The basic process that you go through with this, which translates over to everything else, is you find a potting station, and you get one of the clay pots, and you fill it with soil, and then you take the seed for the flower that you want to bloom, and you water it. And then a little sprout comes out, and you start your journey. Uh, this is basically the same process that you go through except for like the very last one where they try to mix that up a lot more with fertilizers and different kinds of pots but this is basically the procedure that you have to go through every single time and it's not a, a terrible one but it does seem like it's trying to introduce you to mechanics that really aren't going to be utilized all that much or played around with throughout the rest of the game. But it's not terrible. The next thing you have to do is figure out how the game is going to function. And the way that puzzle solving in this game works is not so much trial and error, it's not uh, trying to figure out the logic, which is very different than the way it would be presented from like the logic puzzles of Cube or The Witness. What Botany Manor does instead is ask you to go on an investigation. The investigation is basically looking at a bunch of documentation and charts and photographs that are around, piecing together the information that you need in order to determine what is going to make this plant grow. So, for instance, for the windflower, that very first one, it basically starts talking about what kind of flower it is. There are charts on a blackboard you can look at, and you can see that 
these certain kinds of flowers are considered volcanic instead of like arid. So we need to look for what volcanic flowers want. And then you find out that they have certain temperatures that they want to uh, use in order to bloom. And then you can fidget with your little steamer so that you can get the blower to have a certain temperature. You can put your flower in front of that. And then, oh, it hit the right temperature, it blooms, you move on to the next thing. It's a pretty straightforward thing, and it's very contained. So this is an easy one to get you used to the system. Later on, though, this becomes very convoluted. And the reason is because you start to deal with multiple flowers at the same time and have to figure out the delineation of information, because some of this information will be in one part of the manor, and then other information will be on a completely different area of the manor. Now, this wouldn't be such a bad thing if you had the ability to then access documents that you've looked at from your notebook. You cannot do that. And I think it's the one big flaw in this game. You have to walk everywhere. There are some shortcuts that open up, as you are able to access new parts of the manor. But once I look at posters and everything like that, it will ask me to correlate these to the flowers that the information is for, but I can't actually look at those posters or the information or even have a thing written down in the notebook of the information that I got from it. I'll give you the example of the flower that you find in the apple orchard. You basically have to do your process, your basic process of putting your germinated flower together at a potting station. But then you find out that it actually won't bloom unless it gets additional nutrients. It needs sugars. So what are you going to do about that? Well, you have to look at a poster that tells you about different kinds of pots and the different amounts of nutrients that they can actually obtain, additional ones at least. Well, okay, great, this sounds perfectly fine. I find out that it's like 97 ounces of additional nutrients is the most that it can possibly take. Terrific. Well, now there is an apple processing station over across the way. There is a large series of different types of apples that are on the counters. There is a poster that tells you what those different apples are called. There is another list over across the way that tells you the different properties of those apples, if they're high acidity, low acidity, whatever, and also the general ounces of sugar that they have in them. You've gone through this, and apparently there's also something you can do with the slides, the photosynthetic process for each one of them. I didn't actually have to worry about that. You can kind of figure out from here what you're supposed to do, right? I need to find the right apples to combine together that are going to give me 97 ounces of sugar. And then there is, conveniently, an apple press. And I can put my pot under the apple press, and I press the apples that give me that kind of juice, and then it sprouts. But this information is kind of like all over the yard. So if I forget what the amount is that I can put into a pot, I have to walk back to where the poster is and figure it out. This is especially annoying when you see a tower with five levels for you to go through and different windows for you to open and close in order to get the right wind speed for a flower to bloom, because you can't see it from the outside. I can't take a diagram into the tower. Yeah, it wasn't that Botany Manor was hard to figure out. I kind of got what the process was, but because I couldn't easily access information, about halfway through, just to expedite, I did start looking at walkthroughs, because it was pretty much like, I understand the logic that they're trying to go through, but I just don't want to spend an inordinate amount of time looking for every single one of these documents, applying it to the right kind of thing, having to figure out how this one correlates to this one correlates to this one, while trying to access this information which I can't easily. And that's unfortunate, because for a lot of its production value, it looks very nice. 
It has a uh, nice calming soundscape to it. It uh, looks good. It has interesting plants. Uh, it even has kind of an interesting story uh, with Arabella Green and the time period that she's living in. And uh, it has nice explorable gardens and everything like that. But outside of blooming the flowers themselves, there really isn't much to do in this game. The um, walking is not as slow as I've seen it in some games, but it is not particularly quick. And so you are just kind of wandering through this manor, finding out all about moths and the times of year that they come out and what colors are representative of those times of year, different kinds of ducks and the calls that they make, and a lot of just various information that is being presented to you. And frankly, uh, you know, it's fine. It, it's, it's a fine enough way to do puzzles more as a mystery than anything else. But at the same time, uh, I, I really need something just for peace of mind, where once I start putting this information together, I can almost do a storyboard where I say, oh yes, the information that I found on this document that we've been able to apply. Oh yes, actually this piece of information is important to this other piece of information and I can do the links and I can have the information easily accessible so that I can brainstorm almost using my notebook. But the notebook is not really used for that. The notebook is just used to show you the flowers and that you have collected all of the documents, not what the documents say. The end of the game is I mean, I'm not really going to tell you what happens at the end of the game, but, you know, it's it's not like twists and turns of, of this kind of game. It's pretty much finishing up what Lady Green set out to do at the very start of the game. And so that's cool. It ends on a nice positive note. I don't know if it's the kind of game that I would recommend to the casual gamer. Because it is a lot of looking at posters, looking at paintings, listening to different sounds and tones, and then trying to remember it in relationship to other data that you're getting. And that might seem tedious to you. Who'd have thought? But if you like puzzle games and if you like. Uh, cozy games, you might find a lot of value in this. And it will be fun to kind of like uncover the mysteries of why this exists and this exists and, and how we utilize this mechanic that maybe you saw well before in the game and how it actually applies if you know what to look for. If I were to give you a different recommendation for a game that's kind of similar to this, I would actually give you The Witness. Uh, the Looker is a fun parody of it, too, by the way. But the, but the Witness is a very straightforward puzzle game where you have these uh, lines, these like little mazes, and you have to move a line through the maze, but then it keeps reiterating itself in doing larger versions of that, where the lines start to actually appear in the game world itself in order to unlock doors for you, yourself, to go through, and talks more about perspective and reflection and how to utilize those lines, even if there are things that are invisible around you. Uh, it keeps reiterating on its idea in a really interesting way, uh, as you go through, and it is like the sole mechanic of it. They really just utilize it for everything. You have to draw lines just to utilize the boat or gates or anything like that. It's always there, uh, even to the entire landscape and how you interact with that. A very good game overall, uh, a good example of also like a more calm, chill sort of puzzle game that doesn't have any like large scale stakes uh where you're worried about dying overall so yeah if you get a chance to play the witness uh that that is a a good offering in this same vein
Okay, so there is no sun down here, but I think that there should be less sun. So I'm going to go further down into the cave and uh, see if I can even get less sun down there. Keeps my complexion so milky white and soft. Would you like to come with me? If you need moisturizer, I think I have some around here. No. No, I've used it all up. Sometimes the air in these caves can cause your skin to, like, get a little too moist. And you start to get mold on your face. Okay. Well... You, you enjoy getting sunburn out there, sucker.